Hello and welcome to another video by Game, by Game Dev, Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. Today I'm comparing how easy it is to change the texture of a sprite when it is clicked in Godot versus Construct and Game Maker Studio. At the end of the video, please comment on which engine you think it's easier to use. Please remember to like my video if you enjoy my content and consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos from me in the future. In Game Maker Studio, we have a room with a background and we have a sprite on it. This sprite has two frames. Now we're gonna switch between the two frames. If you have a look at the sprite directly, you'll notice that we have frame zero and frame one. Frame zero wings up, frame one wings down. So if we go to the object itself and we add an event when the mouse left is pressed, what we can do is make sure that they are pressing the left mouse button when they are clicking on this sprite and we will then change the sprites frame and we'll start with frame one because it's currently on frame zero and we'll switch relative to the frame it's on so if it's on zero it'll switch to one if it's on one it'll switch to zero so now when we play the game we should see the wings flapping as we click now let's have a look at how this is done in construct 3. so what we have is another background and this time I have two sprites, one with the wings up, we'll call this bird one, and another sprite with the wings down, we'll call this bird two. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put bird two behind bird one. So we'll copy the position of bird one and paste it onto bird two. Now bird two, we're gonna set to be initially not visible. And bird 2 is now behind bird 1. What we'll do now is on the event sheet, we'll make it so that when you are clicking on bird 1, we will toggle the visibility of the sprite. So we'll set its visibility to toggle. And we'll do the same for bird 2. Set its visibility to toggle. So now when we run it, as we click, it should set the correct sprite to visible. Now let's go and have a look at how complicated or not the process is in Godot. All right guys, so here we found ourselves in Godot and you'll see what I have is uh, a simple scene set up already so it's more interesting to look at. And the bird can fly to the left and fly to the right but if we click him, he doesn't flap his wings, he doesn't change sprites. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to go to the script for the bird. And we're going to add in two variables at the top here. Because we want to be able to change sprites based on these two variables. So we're going to add them as export variables. We'll call it icon1. Um, and we can actually preload the sprite over here if we want. So we can go and choose this here. We right click and we say copy path. We can come in and paste that path right in. And we can have another one. Export bar icon 2 equals preload. And we go and grab, grab the path of our other sprite. go now if we go back to the scene view and click on our um, player here we have our sprites now icon 1 and icon 2 so we could we could go and drag in any sprite we wanted to use to these variables because now they're publicly accessible in the editor okay but we've loaded those two sprites one wings up one wings down the next thing we want to do is be able to respond to mouse clicks. Okay, so in order to be able to respond to a mouse click, 
or an input event in Godot, we need to use a function called um, input event. And so there it is, it's a built in. And we're going to say if the event is an input event mouse button, input event mouse, there, mouse button, right? And the event dot uh, button index is equal to the left button, so that's button left. And that left button is pressed. Then we will respond. And what we'll do is we'll um, create a custom method called on player clicked because the idea behind ours is that they then click on the player. So we'll call a function called player clicked. Okay, now we should make that function. So that's what's going to happen when they click on the player. So let's make a function called on player clicked. And this is now what happens when the player is clicked on. You can put some output to the console if you want to, such as sprite clicked. So you'll be, you'll be able to know when the sprite is being clicked. But what we want to do is if our sprite, so dollar sprite texture, right, is equal to icon one, then we want to set it to icon two. So then we want to go dollar sprite dot set texture to icon two. Otherwise, we'll just set it to icon one. So dollar sprite dot set texture to icon one. Okay, so that should let us click the bird and allow him to flap his wings. So let's press play, click, click, and now he can flap his wings, he can fly, and we can make his wings flap as we click. If we want his wings to flap without being clicked on as he flies, we can easily do that in my move function here. I can just, as he changes position, call the on player clicked function and as he moves, he'll now flap his wings. That's all I have time for today. I hope to see you all again next time.